Sorry for the delay, trying to get everything set up. We got a 10 minute delay. But uh, thank you for those of you that uh, have been waiting. All right. Hi, Rick. Cynthia, sorry guys. Running a little bit late today. Sorry about that. We are doing uh, potato soup today. It is snowing here. And uh, we're going to do something hearty to warm up the body because it was freezing all day today. We got some snow here in the uh, Sierras. But uh, anyway, Hello to everybody. Hello, Jan Stewart, Rhode Island Eats, Rick, uh, Jeanette. Thank you, guys. Let me know if the audio is okay. Um, we're going to get started. We're going to be cooking today uh, potato soup. I did make also some sourdough, some homemade uh, sourdough in this Dutch oven earlier. And uh, so we're going to do that today. Hopefully it turns out. I'm gonna do my best to have it work the way I want it to. Well, I hope that everybody had a lovely uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Let's uh, move you guys here. We're gonna move over here to the, uh, where I'm gonna be cutting the potatoes. Once again, thank you guys for showing up. Sorry for the delay once again. I was running a little bit late today. I uh, had to run to the grocery store and pick up some stuff. Paul, let's see uh, real quick. Let's get into some comments. Paul says, what's the price on the Finex pot? Uh, so this, this 7.25 quart Dutch oven is retailing for $400. The uh, five quart retails for three fifty, and the three quart retails for three hundred. Uh, they are made here in the USA in Portland, Oregon. Um, they're actually really good uh, Dutch ovens compared to a Lodge. I mean, you can't beat Lodge's price. Um, Lodge obviously has uh, great Dutch ovens as well. Uh, the only thing that I that I know about Lodge is um, they don't really offer a Dutch oven that's uh, like a seven quart uh, without a bale. I think the only the only one they have is with a bale. I don't think they offer like a seasoned Dutch oven without one. So um, that's just something to note. The seasoning guys on the um, on the seven quart Dutch oven actually works really well. So. Also something for you guys to know. Jan says, does the seasoning boil off? Uh, no, we're gonna be, so typically when you make something like this, uh, obviously it also depends on the seasoning, but I've been using the Dutch oven for uh, about pretty much two weeks straight now. I've been doing a lot of things with it. And I have developed uh, a pretty, I want to say a pretty decent uh, coat of seasoning now. Um, and so when you actually, uh, so we're not going to be boiling with water. Uh, I, I don't boil water in my cast iron, um, like bare iron. I do it with enameled, that's obviously because that's enameled. But I don't boil any kind of water or anything like harsh too, for too long. <clears throat> um, this is going to be chicken stock, which is okay in a seasoned Dutch oven. So we're going to do chicken stock, we're going to do milk, we're going to do heavy whip. Uh, so it's going to be a thick uh, consistency, so it shouldn't have that much effect on it. I think a, uh, I've even done like um, American goulash in my Dutch ovens before, and I mean nothing, nothing really happens, um, especially since I've built up a decent layer of seasoning. But once you got one good going on like a good seasoning of layer 
you're not going to have issues with uh, with your Dutch oven. But right now I'm just getting some of my potatoes, trying to go through them. <clears throat> I got some questions for you guys. Did any of you get any of the uh, any cast iron for the uh, like Cyber Monday or Black Friday? I'd like to know. guys just trying to get as many as I can that are the uh, the gold Yukon I have heard in recipes that uh, doing the gold Yukon potatoes for this recipe for, for potato soup is a lot better than than russet potatoes and the reason being is that the russet potato is a little drier so it's going to be not as silky more uh, I guess you could say on the side of like uh, russet potatoes I think are great for like mashed potatoes but when you require something that's more creamy or, or something that's more like this it's, it's harder to do a, a good recipe that's going to turn out right with without the wrong or without the right potato so I I'm doing my best to get the uh, these potatoes out. My wife bought these potatoes at um, at Costco, but they are already sprouting, so I'm not going to be using those. Um, they look kind of funny, and they're squishy now. So uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but yes, um, you know, for some reason these are just kind of funny looking. But anyway, uh, I'll be right back. I'm going to throw these out, and then I'll read some comments. here. I'm going to rinse these real quick and then rough chop them about a one inch in thickness I guess you could say. I feel like I need more potatoes. I don't feel like that's enough. Let me read some comments. Um, let's see what's going on here. Uh, put you guys over here next to the uh, Dutch oven, and that's what I mean here, guys. Um, once you develop a good seasoning layer on your on your iron, you know your cast iron, it's it's not as bad uh, or hard for you to cook something like this where it's pretty much boiled. Um, it's not going to be too hard on your seasoning, is what I'm trying to say. But well, let's see, guys. want to read your guys' comments. Alright, let's see. I'm going to read some comments here, guys. So once again, thank you guys for showing up. Jan, Cynthia, Rick, uh, Rhode Island Eats, BMF7831, Hippie Longshanks, thank you for the $5. Fun fund, this stuff is pricey. <laughs> thank you, Hippie Longshanks, for the... Uh, he did a $5 donation. Thank you very much. He says, uh, Finex Fund. That stuff is pricey. Yes, it is. Fisherman. Uh, hello, Rhode Island Eats. Fisherman. Anyway, let's see. Read some comments. Um, 
Uh, Rick says they got to get their iron intake. No, um, it's not. You don't get that iron intake uh, like many people might think. But um, yeah, if, if it tasted like iron, I've done that before. When I first started with ca uh, cooking with cast iron, I remember the first time I, I think I did a pasta or I boiled in my, my cast iron. And uh, I could definitely taste the iron and it wasn't great. And I honestly did not like that. So um, I, I obviously, if it doesn't taste uh, like, you know, if it doesn't taste the way it's supposed to and it, it has that iron taste to it, I obviously won't eat it. But um, I've done several dishes like goulash. I've done um, baked spaghetti. I've done, uh, what is it, what else? Lasagna. I've done those in my um, Dutch ovens and they've turned out great. Rhode Island Eats says, a nice cutting board brand. Um, funny enough, my brother ended up buying this for me because uh, obviously he knows that I'm doing these things, but he found this at um, Home Depot. I don't know exactly where, but he said he found it at Home Depot for about 20, 30 bucks and it's, it's it's actually pretty nice, guys. It's uh, solid. It's heavy. Um, I don't know exactly the brand. But, yeah. Uh, I, I love this cutting board a lot. But, anyway, let's keep going. Uh, Finex Camp Oven would be interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, Fisherman says a Finex Camp Oven would be kind of interesting. I think it would be, too. Uh, I want Finex to do... Uh, some camping stuff that would be awesome or perhaps some uh i don't know if you guys remember but finex actually did some uh different style handles where they would actually uh, like anodize these or or the uh the uh, brass knobs here they would do different styles i don't know if you guys remember that but they stopped doing it i wish they'll i wish that they would do it again all right guys uh, so let's continue Cynthia, oh, Cynthia says, I hate to bore you all. Uh, I want to talk about my new snowflake cast iron. It's not as heavy as a normal lodge. Surprisingly, I got him washed, dried, and uh, black. So I'm, I'm guessing, Cynthia, you gave it a couple coats of seasoning. Beautiful iron. Hope you guys are enjoying. Actually, you know what? I want to take this time real quick to uh, apologize, guys. I'm really sorry to uh, Luis, uh, the winner, along with Frank. Frank and Luis, I'm sorry because I, when I shipped, this was during Thanksgiving, I accidentally, uh, so I boxed them up right, but I shipped uh, the items to the wrong winners. Uh, Cynthia was the only one that obviously was not, not sent the wrong one. She actually got hers. But uh, I want to apologize to you guys. I'm really, really sorry that I you know, had that mix up, but hopefully you guys aren't too upset with those things. Uh, I will do my best to not have that happen again. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to put that out there, guys, you know, saying sorry for those winners. Uh, I think I'm going to do one giveaway at a time to avoid any kind of confusion from now on. But, uh, yeah, look forward to more giveaways. I'm going to have several before the year ends. So, um, anyway, with all that said, let's continue. I got to make my dinner. can tell I still have a lingering cough but I've uh, read the news a lot of people feel the same way I guess a lot of people still have lingering coughs and uh, it is somewhat annoying and frustrating uh, to be honest but um, at least I'm we're a lot better now my uh, funny thing is my sister-in-law just ended up catching the flu as well and uh, so right now she's uh, sick pretty sick um, but hope you know thankfully they're doing actually really well they're not doing too bad from what I know but uh, for those of you that uh, are sensitive to uh, getting blue or the cold I would recommend that you guys wear a mask when you guys go out just to be safer I guess you could say that way there's uh, less danger of you getting exposed to those things. And I, I did hear COVID is making a comeback. 
once again. Um, and you know, those of you that are more affected the, uh, with those kinds of things, I would recommend just, you know, for the meantime, use a mask when you go out. Uh, it'll help prevent um, getting, you know, sick so quickly or, or worse for that matter. I have heard that the uh, more exposed that you are, the worse that, that your cold or your, your infection could be. Don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I've heard. All right, guys, I think I might need more potatoes, but we're going to move on, actually. What I need to do is also heat up my Dutch oven, so we're going to move you guys right over here. You guys can see that. And uh, we're going to place uh, bacon in it first, so we're going to put some bacon in there. And I was missing some ingredients, so I had to run to the store and buy these things. So I got some bacon right now. So we're going to do eight slices of bacon. We were supposed to do about three pounds of potatoes, but I highly doubt that I have three pounds. So we're going to do whatever we have, which I want to say might be like two pounds. do a cold Dutch oven or semi-warm I guess you could say it's not um, it's not hot so I have heard that it is better to lay your bacon in uh, in a cold piece of iron versus doing um, something that's hot I guess it prevents it from you know causing such mayhem We're doing about eight to ten slices of bacon. The rest is uh, leftover for uh, breakfast. So, as you can see here, we got some bacon laid in there. I got the uh, stove on. We got it at about, uh, I guess you could say four. But yes, we got some bacon in there. Hopefully there can be some uh, bacon action in the moment, or in the meantime while I prep everything else, guys. But. Let me read some comments real quick. Cynthia Wesley says, you're right, Luis, when we were under the mask mandate, barely had a flu season. Flu season, I wear mine faithfully. Yes. Um, and as silly as you might guys think that is, it is, uh, I think, it does actually help, uh, to be honest. And I've actually caught myself using my mask. Uh, well, I work uh, as a technician. I'm an HVAC technician. So I have to go into, sometimes in residential areas, uh, or businesses, um, and I recently actually worked on a uh, um, urgent care, and uh, their AC system and their I'm sorry their heater system was down, so I had to go in there and replace a couple parts. But I'll be honest, I wore my mask, and obviously you kind of have to when you're in those areas. They do recommend that you wear your mask when you're like at the urgent care. Um, but I was, you know, I do it all the time whenever I go to anyone's home or any business. I always I still wear my mask. Hello, John, Honey Badger. I don't know if I said hi to you guys. Uh, Papa Dan, thank you guys for making it. Papa Dan says, Luis, cold skillet doesn't make the bacon sugar start cooking instantly. Sugar on a hot skillet will stick. 
Yeah, that's what I've heard. So that you know, uh, that's what I'm doing. A, uh, I guess you could say a cold start. So it's starting to heat up now, and uh, we'll see how this goes. So I did about eight to ten slices of bacon. We're gonna let that cook for a bit, and then uh, once it starts heating up, and uh, we'll move it around. Paul, Paul Carter says, I can just see my home cured bacon in there. Oh, I bet. I've seen uh, people on YouTube making uh, home, like, you know, homemade bacon, and it looks great. Uh, every time I see it, I, I you know, I want to dive deep into that stuff, but I, I haven't dove into those kinds of uh, things at the moment. I think what I, so far, I, what I've really kind of dove into lately, guys, and I don't know if you guys have seen it, but... Uh, baking bread, sourdough specifically. I've been, uh, I started my own sourdough, and uh, that was a big old disaster in the beginning. Uh, I couldn't get my breads right. Um, my starter wasn't that great, and uh, it was just kind of a hit and miss at the in, in the beginning. And I started this about a month ago, until today. Today I finally baked a loaf of uh, sourdough, and it looks promising. So I'm hoping that that. If I do this potato soup, I can put the uh, potato soup in that loaf of sourdough, uh, somewhat like they do in the restaurants. But hopefully, if that's the case, I'll hopefully we can do that today. BMF seven eight three one. Thank you very much for the twenty dollar donation. I appreciate it, guys. Rhode Island Eats says uh, I've worked at a hospital for almost ten years. Unless you have a uh, the N ninety five respirator you'll still catch stuff uh, that's what we have to use for TB or one. Oh yeah TB is insane um, I've heard uh, bad stuff I've had family that uh, weren't vaccinated and they got TB and uh, that was rough I think they might have actually never really got you know went to uh, seek medical attention I think they might have passed away from that I don't remember though I was younger All right, guys, so we got the bacon in. After that, we're, we're going to obviously cook it, and then we'll chop it up, take it out, and then we'll throw in some. Uh, what I'm going to actually do is uh, use some shallots, so I'm going to get those ready. So for this recipe, guys, just so you guys know if you guys want to make this at home, what I'm going to be using is uh, seven to eight slices of bacon. We're also going to use, I like using shallots, so I'm going to use uh, two shallots. You guys can see that, two shallots here. Um, from there, we're going to use milk. Uh, we're going to need about a cup of milk. No, I'm sorry, half a cup of milk. Uh, we're going to need chicken stock, so about uh, maybe two can or two of these. Uh, let me grab it so I can show you guys. We're going to need some chicken broth about, what is this, what size is this? Uh, one cup, so it's a cup, uh, no, I'm sorry. It's about this much, which is, shoot, I don't even know the ounces. What are the ounces on this? Oh, I'm sorry. It's about 48 ounces of uh, chicken broth. So we're going to need 48 ounces of chicken broth. We're going to need flour, heavy whip, milk and a little bit of sour cream to give it some, uh, a little bit of a tang and uh, obviously some potatoes. So you, if you guys can hear or see that, we are starting to have some action going on in there. I mean, who doesn't love bacon? Actually, I do know people that don't like bacon. I've always said to them that they are, they're a little bit odd. Jeanette says, my husband had COVID two years. Uh, he still can't taste the smell. Yeah, you know, and um, obviously there's a lot of people with lingering effects. And uh, I'll be honest, guys, there's no, uh, I don't believe in that stuff where they don't, say, or, you know, people say that it was fake. Uh, no, actually, I, my uncle passed away from COVID. Uh, he got COVID right in the beginning during the pandemic, and uh, he passed away from that. Yeah, made it to the hospital. And about 30 minutes while being there, he passed away from a cardiac arrest. 
also been denied. Uh, he went to the hospital and they somewhat kind of told him to go home and, and manage it there, but not that he was denied, you know, to stay, but he wasn't doing that bad at the time. And then once he went home, a week went by, came, and then after that, he got his uh, health went worse and he got worse and passed away uh, shortly after that. But anyway, guys, um, don't want to be talking about that stuff. We're going to be talking about food and cast iron. Uh, thank you, Jeanette. Yeah, you know, I, like I said, uh, COVID was uh, all kinds of crazy. Uh, one thing that I do dread, I guess a little bit on the topic once again, but one thing that I do dread all the time is the flu. I hate the flu. I've had the flu uh, two or three times to the point that I felt like dying. So I don't, I don't fare well when I get the flu. And I got the, I want to say that I possibly had the flu about two weeks ago. Uh, after RSV because we also got RSV and we were sick for two months so I got sick in October and November uh, along with my kiddos so that was a whole mess I was actually trying to get this bacon that was uh, at uh, the store that didn't have any sugar added, but they had run out. Everybody was going for the good stuff, so I had to get the normal bacon, which is still good. It said uh, no sugar added and I forget what else, no nitrates or something of that nature. Don't know much about nitrates, but I'm assuming it's not as healthy as it sounds or it's, you know, doesn't sound healthy, let's just put it that way. Yep. <coughs> uh, BMF says, so sorry, Luis. Yeah, uh, I, you know, it, it, it's tough. Papa Dan, same thing. Thank you guys for the uh, kind words. Rick, thank you. So, yeah. But anyway guys, so yes, bacon. We're gonna I'm gonna cut some shallots real quick. I don't know if you guys wanna see me cutting shallots or actually I'm gonna move you guys over here. Actually no, you guys keep an eye on the bacon. Let me know. Give me a shout out if you guys see something. Right, guys anything burning no okay great As much as I don't want splatter, it still happens. Bacon's very notorious for that, guys. Anyway, let's see. Uh, Paul Porter says, My wife and I had flu vaccines, but got uh, influenza A. 
on the downward side now. Oh, yeah. Um, actually, my sister-in-law has influenza A, which I don't remember which one's the worst one, B or A. I think we might have had B, so uh, we weren't really sick. I mean, thank goodness we weren't that sick, but uh, I'm telling you guys, flu is uh, flu is scary. Fisherman says, uh, I've had beef tongue. My brother slow cooks it so good. Uh, yeah, uh, my family loves that stuff. Um, I'll be honest, not a big fan of it. My, my mother would always say that I was, uh, she, she, she would call me something. I forget the word, but obviously making fun of me, saying that I was uh, uncultured, saying that I needed to try more things, which I'm sure she was right. I love how bacon smells. It smells so good. Now I'm gonna uh, quickly show you guys my bread. Where is it? Oh, it's right there. As I mentioned, I just ventured into sourdough making, and uh, this is the loaf that I made, one of the loaves that I made today. I'll try and show you guys. So yeah, um, this is one of them. I'm gonna use this for sandwiches, and then I also made a round one that I'm gonna use right now for the, uh, for the potato soup. My wife, uh, she loves cooking, and I well, not that she loves cooking, but she knows how to cook really well. My wife, she's a great cook, and uh, but she's not much of a baker. Um, and I, you know, I told her I said, "Oh, I got a great ear on the uh, on the sourdough," and she said, "What do you mean ear?" I said, "Yeah, the ear. It's, it's kind of a coveted thing that bakers look for in their sourdough." And she says, "Well, yeah, it looks." It looks rustic, and I said, yeah. She's like, I have no idea what you're talking about, but she says it looks good. And I think it was, who was it that made a comment right now? Jeanette, she said, nice ear. So for those of you, just uh, that's what that means. That little, that little uh, slice of the sourdough that I cut into, uh, that rose, and uh, had good oven spring, or it looks like it has good oven spring. And that's what gives it that ear that uh, a lot of bakers look forward to on their on their uh, breads. Shadow Walker, Shadow Walker XM, hello. Thank you guys for joining. Paul Carter says uh, his favorite Piqua is the best vintage. Griswold, move over. Yeah, you know, um, <coughs> Griswold has built a, a wide reputation about being one of the best uh, for vintage iron or just pretty much all in general. But um, there's a lot of companies like favorite Piqua that were really good. Uh, Martin Stoven Range, um, Atlanta Stoveworks, BSR, um, Volraff. Um, Wagnerware, obviously, Lodge. Those companies still produce great iron. Um, and, uh, you know, but I, I want to say, obviously, that Griswold is well known because of how popular it had become during that, that era as well. I mean, um, Griswold was kind of a household name, and I want to say it would be like the modern elite pans that, that you see today, so like the uh, Field Company or. 
um, Butter Pat, um, who else? Field Company, Butter Pat, Finax, um, Smithy, those companies, that, I guess that's what Griswold was. Lodge has always kind of maintained the uh, economy line and uh, they've stayed there perfectly and they produce great, uh, great cast iron. So that's why Lodge is really hard to beat. They, they produce great iron at a great price. Uh, vintage Blacklock, that's like, Vintage Blacklock is, uh, it's, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen that, but it's a reference, but like the Great White Buffalo, it's, it's something rare. Uh, I mean, if you can find one that's authentic, you're, you know, that's, that's pretty much what a lot of, at least in my opinion, a lot of collectors want. I wish I could have, or find myself a, a Vintage Blacklock. But for you to come across one of those, I mean, you've got to have luck on your side. Uh, even with uh, also Waypack or Wapack, um, the uh, obviously really hard to find and highly priced, the uh, headdress, the uh, Native American with the headdress, those skillets obviously go for a good amount of money as well. All right, I think my bacon is getting close to done. What do you guys think? What I'm going to do is actually lower the temperature on this because I don't want the uh, the bacon to uh, burn, the bacon fat. We're going to be using that, guys, so I'm not going to remove anything. All I'm going to do is actually just remove the bacon. Honey Badger says, uh, I, I love uh, Onyeda. I, I always have a hard time pronouncing it. But I know it is, uh, is it Wapak Onyeda? Wapak Onyeda? I feel like I'm just butchering all of this, but uh, yeah, that's a hard word to say. All right. So we're going to take out the uh, bacon. We'll cut it up in a minute. Obviously let it cool for now. I did not get a chance to cut the shallots, so we're going to do that right now. I'm going to bring you guys over. guys so as you can see we got shallots here we're going to be using the shallots i'm trying to work quickly because i don't want the uh my bacon to burn but if you guys have never tried shallots i do recommend that and typically i think a lot of people for this recipe they use uh, yellow onion or uh, vidalia onion which I do like those as well. And not a lot of people like the white onion, but uh, white onions put in, in, I guess you could say a majority of the recipes. Uh, that's why people uh, love cooking with it. But if you want a more mild taste, then, or a sweeter taste, and not so strong, then the Vidalia is probably your best bet. But uh, my wife, she really loves shallots, so that's why we went with shallots. All 
BMF7831 says, My Smithy 10-inch uh, ten, ten Chef skillet is getting oven seasoning number three uh, from Black Friday. Oh, so you guys did buy... I did mention... I, I'm sorry if I didn't read it, guys. Did you guys buy any cast iron for Black Friday or Cyber Monday? I'd like to know. And this is going to be a rough chop doesn't have to be as, as nice as you might, you know, think. So just rough chop it. Oh man, we have some skin underneath. I missed. I thought I had gotten it. I really don't like that I do that sometimes. All right, I think I got most of it. I need uh, better knife skills, guys. I, I wish uh, I wish I could take some classes for for uh, cooking. That would be nice. I'm not a professional, guys. Just so you guys know, uh, I am a home cook that is learning uh, as I go. And uh, don't think that I'm a pro here, guys. As I said, learning as I go, doing my best to just show you guys what I've picked up uh, over the years. All right, and that's good enough here, guys. As, you, as I said, a rough chop is pretty much all we need. <clears throat> all right, so I think this might go fast now. We're gonna move over back over here. As you can see, it's kind of cooled down. It was smoking earlier. If you guys don't have a bench scraper, I do recommend one. It actually helps out a lot. I'm going to cook these down and we're going to throw in our potatoes after that. So I think that we can do the potatoes now. Turn up the heat just a little bit. Trying to get all these potatoes coated with that bacon uh, grease, that bacon fat. Well, I'm stirring all this pretty vigorously right now. And uh, nothing should be sticking, guys. If it's sticking, then you need a little bit more oil. Um, and if this isn't enough of uh, like you know oil, you can add a little bit of olive oil or any oil that you prefer. Or if you have any uh, bacon fat or lard, you can go that route as well. Um, how much do I recommend that? Not a lot. This is possibly good enough. 
we're just going to stir it. And I, as I said earlier too, I did turn up the heat again. Once again, I had lowered it. So we're going to let that cook a little bit. We're going to be stirring it constantly. In the meantime, I read some comments uh, and then possibly move over to chopping up the, uh, the bacon in a bit. <coughs> Alright guys, let's see, um, read some comments here. Papa Dan says, phone battery has run down and I got to take my meds and eye drops. See y'all later. Luis, glad that the family is better at night, y'all. Uh, good night, uh, Papa Dan. Uh, I don't know if you're still here, but uh, I hope you have a good night. Stay safe and uh, yeah, everybody say, say bye to uh, Papa Dan. Fisherman says he got a 6 and a 10 with Litz uh, Field Company for Black Friday. They're, they're actually pretty well discounted, so uh, I'm glad that a lot of people jumped on the sales. Uh, honestly, the biggest sales are always going to be during the holiday, so sometimes uh, it is better to hold out. That way you get a better sale. Paul Carter says, I love to slice onions with a mandolin. Yeah, I, I have a mandolin and... and um, I just received a really nice one from my uh, mother-in-law. I haven't tried it yet, so I, ha I have tried one of the cheaper versions, and I had to throw it out because it started, uh, the blade just wasn't working. So I tossed that one, and uh, she, she noticed that I would use the mandolin, and she said, I have one that I don't use, and uh, she gave it to my wife, and my wife gave it to me, so now I got a new mandolin. mandolin. <coughs> Jeanette says, I almost bought the Lodge Fluted Hand. It was on sale for $10 less. Yeah, and I think you could also, they had a sale. I don't know if that sale was still going on during that time, but they had a sale where you would buy something over $100 and you would get $25 off your whatever you're buying. So if you bought that fluted cake pan and then you added something else, they would pretty much give you that for free. The, uh, you know, the other, you know, if, say you Say you buy a $25 pan, that would technically be the free one. And then I think they also offered free shipping. So it was actually a pretty good deal also from Lodge. <coughs> Excuse me. Michael Sweeney says it's pronounced WAPAC. I've heard a lot of people say WAPAC, WAPAC. I, I think I've always referred to it as WAPAC. John Jean says, I got a Lodge loaf pan yesterday in a Lodge 2 uh, two quart Dutch oven and a 13.25 Lodge lid. Nice. You got a lot of Lodge stuff, John. And I think, John, you, you're the one that uh, loves Lodge, I think, from what I know. As I said before, Lodge is really, really hard to beat. And the reason they've been around so long is because they have great stuff at great prices. All right, in a moment, guys, we're going to throw in some uh, chicken broth. And at the end, we're going to throw in the uh, chopped um, bacon. But that's towards the end. Actually, no, I, I might reserve that. Or reserve some so that we have some crunchy bits uh, when I serve my potato soup. But anyway, let's get back to some comments. Uh, Cynthia says, um, do you need the answer asked to Papa? Oh, I'm sorry, that was something else. Land, uh, Fisherman says, Lancaster needs more sizes. Yeah, I, I think at the moment they have, what, the number 8 and the number 10. Yeah, I wish Lancaster would do a little bit more, but uh, with what they have, is it's uh, they have great stuff. I do like Lancaster a lot as well. 
Honey Badger says, uh, do I have an email? Wanted to send you something. Yes, uh, Honey Badger, I do actually. Uh, if you go on to my channel and hit, go to the uh, About tab, I think you can find my email there. And if you can't, then just send me another message and I can uh, send you my email. Rick says, uh, wait, 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 fisherman. Rick says, uh, that's what I do, Luis, when I, when my meals don't turn out right, I just throw out the cooking equipment. No, I actually had to throw out my uh, mandolin because it was actually, um, it had chipped, the blade had chipped. Otherwise, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gotten rid of it. chicken broth and I can't remember I think it might have been Jeanette who was asking me about the uh, seasoning uh, chicken broth since since it's not purely water-based because uh, it does have fat in it uh, it doesn't really affect the seasoning of your uh, cast iron so um, if you were to do more water than anything else like if I was just to throw water in there then yes I mean that that's gonna reduce the uh, the fat that's in here or the, you know, that, that helps, the fat pretty much helps protect the, uh, the seasoning from actually taking a big hit. So, um, when you do, as I said, you know, a broth, uh, or, you know, like milk that has fat or heavy whipping cream uh, that has fat as well, you don't run into such a big problem with your seasoning. All right. We're going to add just a little bit at a time, not all of it all at once. And I almost forgot that I actually need to add a little bit of flour to this to uh, thicken up the uh, consistency here. So we're going to add a little bit. Let me grab some flour, guys. I'll be right back. Did about a tea, teaspoonful of um, flour now. We're gonna stir it around and possibly do a little bit more in a minute. I just don't want uh, things to get all clumpy. I'm trying to avoid that. I don't want any clumps. So technically, what we're doing right now is building a roof. Um, but you don't, as I said earlier, you don't want to build um, clumps in your in your roof. BMF says, uh, Butter Pat reminds me of, of who? Who's her? I need to read more comments, guys. Sorry about that. <coughs> Let's see. Uh, Rick says, free shipping with the fluted cake pan, too, on Lodge. Oh, John does say that he's the one that loves Lodge. Yep, John loves Lodge. Uh, I do too. Lodge is great. I love all their stuff. They have a lot. And the thing about Lodge too is that they have such a huge variety of, of cookware. 
that uh, sometimes you kind of have to browse their their uh, their web page to see what you know what what they have that's new or maybe that you don't own. Paul Carter says on Amazon I got my seven quart no bail lodge Dutch oven uh, with the lid. Prime shipping sixty nine ninety. Uh, that was a bargain. Yeah. All right, we're gonna add a little bit more broth and a little bit more flour. I'm just using all-purpose flour. Just kind of sprinkling uh, in there. And I think that's about it that we're gonna use. There we go. Add a little bit more liquid. Stir it really well. Get that root consistency back. And as you see, once you start stirring it, everything just starts to emulsify a lot better. And it doesn't look so liquidy. And it starts looking kind of creamy. So that's kind of what we're looking for is that, that creaminess. And then we'll start adding some, um, some heavy whip, some milk, and a little bit of sour cream to add a little bit of tang to this. And as you guys can see here, hopefully... Uh, it's starting to emulsify a lot better. I think it's looking pretty good. It smells great in here, by the way. I wish you guys could smell this. I got a question for you guys, somewhat of a poll. Um, what modern, uh, I wanna know just what modern cast iron company do you guys like the most? And just try your best to choose one. So between Field Company, Smithy, uh, Stargazer, Finax, Butterpat, Lancaster, uh, Marquette. Uh, who else is out, out there that I, I always forget some. There's so many out there now that it's, it's somewhat difficult to keep track. Um, or Northern Company, that's one of them too. Austin Foundry, uh, who else? I know there's more guys, but who is your favorite? I know I'm, I'm forgetting. I want to know who do you guys like? Oh, Lodge. Well, Lodge, but I guess you could say what I meant was like the higher end brands, like the, uh, the elite, what they call modern elite. All right, guys, so real quick. The roux has built up once again. Now we're going to continue and we're going to add everything else. We're gonna need some salt. I'm gonna do some paprika. Some uh, fresh ground pepper. Try my best not to make that sound, guys. Sorry about that. All right, I think that's good enough. Stir this around.
Next, we're going to go in to thicken up. We're going to go in with some uh, heavy whip, some milk. I had a little bit in that one, so I wanted to use it up first. Make sure you stir this constantly to avoid any clumps. You don't want the uh, uh, you don't want any of that the milk fat to kind of curl. So we're gonna stir as much as we can, trying to get this uh, emulsified. Let me see if I can get back to the comments. BMF7831, uh, thank you once again for the $5 donation. Uh, you put down, name a modern skillet that is more of a ripoff in design or price than Butterpat. Butterpat, yes, uh, uh, I think their inspiration came from um, from Waypack or Wapack. Um, but at the same time, I can't complain about Butterpat because obviously, in a sense, like um, a lot of these modern uh, companies that are producing these skillets that are smooth, uh, very unique, like Finex. Um, their their roots are always, uh, you know, about the vintage items, like the vintage skillets. So, uh, if you read some information off of his website, uh, the founder, which is Dennis, he, you know, specifically lets us know of his inspiration and where the design came from and. And obviously, it goes back to his uh, grandmother's his grandmother's uh, skillet, which he ended up breaking. He he was going down uh, stairs, and uh, it fell out of his hands, from what I can recall, and it obviously broke. Uh, and it broke in a place where you can't really fix. So uh, for him, I think that was a starting point to create his own uh, skillet. And uh, as I said once again, for me, I. I really can't complain, but I because I do I I enjoy using Butterpat skillets and they work great. They're expensive because they were hand poured. They're expensive because they're also smooth. They're pretty much casted smooth. So there there's a lot of steps involved. Um, they're not really unary, but um, I think that's why Butterpat is so so exaggerated. Like I'll be honest, the pricing is pretty exaggerated. But once again, the uh, the reason behind it is because of the uh, just the work that's put into it. A lot of hand time. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Hippie Longshanks, Lancaster. He says he got he got. Hippie, do you have your your, uh, your vote on Lancaster? That's your favorite modern. Cynthia says that her favorite is Lodge and BSR, their workhorses. Honey Badger Razor. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Stargazer. I thought I had read it wrong. To wash my hands real quick, guys. I uh, I'm gonna continue reading some comments as well while well, that kind of uh, starts to simmer. We're gonna start adding some more stuff. So as you can see, it's starting to get creamy, guys. But um, anyway. Rhode Island Eats says, uh, y'all don't like the Stargazer, how come? No, I like Stargazer. I know that in the beginning a lot of people had issues with their first uh, production of Stargazer. I, I think they were a lot smoother than what they expected it to be and uh, seasoning wasn't really holding well. And I guess that, that was a lot of people's complaints. Um, but I never experienced that since I, I kind of jumped on Stargazer later after they had uh, fixed it. 
Honey Badger says Stargazer is over engineered. Rick says uh, Le Creuset. He would consider Le Creuset to be uh, overpriced and a ripoff. Uh, Rick says uh, I don't consider Butterpat a ripoff. Pricey, yes, but worth it in my opinion. Yeah, that's what I think as well. Red Island Eats. Oh, you had trouble building up the seasoning on your Stargazer? Yeah, they do take time, guys. And that's the thing with these new modern uh, pans. They take uh, they take time. Laura Hill, or I'm sorry, Laura Hall says, uh, can you make fluffy white rice in a Fine X number 12 skillet? Uh, in a skillet? I think so. Um... Just depends on the seasoning of your cookware. If you have a very, um, very young seasoning on your skillet, uh, you might get some black rice in the sense that it might, uh, your seasoning might boil into the rice. But I think if you used it well enough, maybe a month or two of using it, and then you decide to uh, to uh, cook the rice, you might not have such a problem. It just honestly depends on the way you cook, guys. Um, seasoning does build just uh, the way you cook with, and the, the, the type of food that you cook. Uh, the, obviously, I'll be honest, the fatter the food, you know, the fatter the ingredients, the quicker your seasoning will build up. So say you sear some steaks, some burgers, um, chicken, even some chicken because you need some good oil so that to prevent the uh, chicken from sticking, things of that nature, um, deep frying, baking that's going to help you out your seasoning you shouldn't have problems uh making rice i've seen people do rice in cast iron laura hall says has anyone tried cooking uh in cast iron without seasoning it uh yeah actually there's i don't know if i know there's videos out there but uh there's actually somebody uh here on youtube his his channel is uh, cast iron cookware and he recently posted a video where he uh took a rusty skillet and actually made a fried egg slide all over that skillet. It was rough as can be, pitted, rusty, and the uh, egg was sliding around like nothing. So yeah, you, I mean, seasoning is important so that the, the uh, iron doesn't transfer into your food. And that's what the seasoning is more important for. Add a little bit more chicken broth. <coughs> and a little bit more heavy whip. Make sure, guys, that when you're cooking this, uh, as I said earlier, to stir, to emulsify all of this, and also to prevent the uh, the milk from curdling. I mean, it's still going to taste good. That's it's going to be a weird texture in your soup. And we're going to add a little bit of sour cream. We're going to cover it up and then let that simmer. It's about a quarter cup. And then when we simmer this, guys, um, make sure that uh, you don't fully cover it. 
I would uh, recommend that you crack it, leave it cracked just a little bit, and also make sure that it's simmering and not boiling over. And you want some of that, uh, some of that steam to escape. You don't want, and that way, in a, in a sense, it reduces the uh, the liquid in here to the point where then it becomes emulsified with everything that's in here with the potatoes. Uh, I forgot to add a little bit of actually uh, garlic, but what I'm going to do now is since I didn't add the fresh garlic, we're going to add a little bit of garlic powder. Once again, thank you everybody who's joining us. As you can see, this fine axe is doing great. And as I said, the, uh, you know, like making this in this, uh, un I guess you could say not enameled pot, uh, is still okay. You're not gonna have issues just as long as you have a decent seasoning that has built up. Um, I've used this, I wanna say about six, seven times now. Uh, mostly baking, some deep frying, and I think it's safe enough to be used to make this uh, potato soup. We're going to add a little bit more salt. I should probably... Huh. That tastes a little bit funny. Did I add the wrong? Nope, that's paprika. I was thinking I might have added, uh, for a minute there I thought I added cayenne pepper. No, but it is paprika, okay. I got something spicy, it must be the uh, cracked pepper. For a minute there I was like, oh no, this is gonna be spicy. No, you know what? I think I'm good with salt. Yeah. No more salt. I think I added good enough, uh, a good amount of salt in there. I don't want to have this too salty. Oh, I almost forgot. We're going to add a little bit of milk. <coughs> I'm only doing a little bit at a time. As I said, once again, I want the milk to curdle. I feel like I missed on, missed on something, but this should be good. This smells good. I mean, yeah, it smells great. I don't know, something threw me off. I think I, uh, I see what it is. So I grabbed a bunch of pepper from the spoon when I went like this. That's why I was tasting something spicy. Not that black pepper is spicy, but... All right, we're getting there, guys. I know this is taking some time. I do have it on a medium heat right now. It's not super low, but since I keep stirring it, I think it keeps, uh, it's not boiling over, but it is, there is steam coming off of it. But we're gonna let this simmer, and uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, Finex cast iron right now. And as I said, once again, we're gonna 
close this up, turn it down. I'm going to turn down the heat and then place it that way because that way it allows the uh, steam to escape. And uh, give me a minute guys, I'll read some comments in a minute. We'll get to chatting once again. guys so I'm just picking up real quick and as I said we will get back into it let me read some messages any cheese or cream cheese no I'm not gonna add cream cheese but I am gonna add cheese when I serve it I'm not gonna add it in there um, the other thing that I'm gonna do since it's uh, we're gonna let this simmer for about 20 minutes the other thing that I'm gonna do is grab a I guess you could say a masher and mash it not completely we're gonna still leave some lumps in there but mash it down so that way there's also a, a thicker consistency with it and uh, so yeah so we're gonna chit chat right now a little bit about uh, the new uh, three quart Dutch oven that I just got from uh, fine X along with the uh, some other of their cookware so bear with me while I get that ready you guys this cough is no joke it just lingers and lingers hopefully you guys are doing well and hopefully you guys had a lovely Thanksgiving we'll talk about Thanksgiving in a minute as well Alright guys, sorry about that. We're going to move on over here. So here we go. Trying to adjust this. Once again, bear with me. Alright. <clears throat> I think this size is hilarious. Uh, almost kind of looks like a toy. So yes, guys, this is the Finex 3-quart Dutch oven. I have used it already. I actually made some uh, chicken tenders in this. I did post the video on, um, on my socials, which is Instagram and I think TikTok as well. But anyway, uh, funny thing. It's just uh, hilarious. To me, it's just... Uh, a goofy little 
three quart Dutch oven, but it, it works great actually for, for somebody that doesn't want to be bringing out the bigger Dutch ovens. Uh, and if you want to fry or, or bake or make stews, I could have made, I could have made today's, um, potato soup in this, but I haven't built up good enough seasoning yet. That's why I didn't use this one. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm definitely going to use this to make, uh, bake, to make a lot of, uh, sourdoughs. So I'll be using this one. And, uh, it's just, like I said, it's a funny little Dutch oven. So let's talk about the uh, specs on this real quick. I'm going to get some, uh, 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 a scale. We're going to also measure it just so you guys can see. <coughs> So, this is uh, Finex, their, their Dutch oven that recently just came out. I want to say about a, a month or so ago, maybe a little bit more, maybe a month and a half ago. But um, I did know, when I went down to Portland, Oregon, guys, they did tell me about, um, about their Dutch ovens. They, had, they, they were going to show me the, uh, the three-quart and the seven-quart but they, they couldn't find them. They were looking around for them. And apparently uh, someone had taken them somewhere else or something of that nature. But anyway, I didn't get to see them. But I did know since about, I want to say, when was it that I went? June? June that I went? I knew about them. Obviously, they told me to not mention it. But um, they were going to have me uh, or they were going to let me record it and all that. And once they released, uh, I could have possibly posted that, that video. Uh, with the Dutch ovens that they were producing at the time. But anyway, it's a three quart and it measures eight inches from the flat side to the flat side. But if you actually measure it from the, from the, I guess you could say from this angle to this angle, we're looking at almost eight and a half inches. So a little bit bigger. So it is a little bit bigger. Eight inches are coming from the flat side to the flat side. Um, from the handle to the handle, guys, we're looking at 12 inches. And uh, one thing that I like about this too is that you can actually put your hands in here to the point that you're not really gonna be like this. Cause this, this is, I'll be honest guys, this is somewhat of a bad design because you can get your fingers caught here. But uh, there's still enough space in here that you're not gonna really get your fingers caught in there. And it's still, as I said, it's still a good design. They they improved it. I know that for sure. Um, the handles are tiny, but they they feel great, and it's very ergonomical. Like it feels like the weight is distributed really well on this. It is heavy, too. Just so you guys know, it isn't also uh, milled. It's um, you know the standard texture. It hasn't been surfaced at all. Um, so yeah, height wise, we're gonna measure this real quick. Also with the lid. In case you guys are interested for maybe um, those small little Breville uh, ovens, we're looking at, I want to say about seven inches to the top of the handle. So seven inches and once again, 12 inches from handle to handle. So a funny little um, Dutch oven. Oh, cooking surface actually. So cooking surface guys, we're looking at uh, about six and a half inches. Nope, I take that back. Six and three quarters. So six and three quarters, almost seven inches. The uh, height, we're looking at about four inches, a little bit more, about four and a quarter. <coughs> so it is um, a, a pretty deep oven. I do like it. <clears throat> and the lid, obviously, fits really well. One of their designs, I guess you could say, is that, you know, they've always said that you can place the lid in this manner to allow that steam to escape. That's what I had said earlier with the uh, seven quart that I'm using right now for the soup, um, which actually does come in handy. So that way you don't have to like leave it like that or put it to the side. You can just somewhat twist it and it's pretty stable there. 
But anyway, that's the uh, Dutch oven. So we're gonna weigh it real quick for you guys. And we're gonna put it in, in pounds. So I said it was pretty heavy and I wasn't lying. It's eight pounds uh, with point, uh, what is it? 0 0.8, so pretty much dead even eight pounds. <clears throat> As I mentioned, pretty heavy. With the lid, we're looking at 10 pounds, 9.1 ounces. I'm sorry, 9.5 9 ounces. So um, pretty heavy. It's a pretty heavy little Dutch oven. As I said earlier, three quart, uh, but it's great. I love it. This thing is awesome. I've already used it a couple times and I've already, you know, uh, I've already liked it. Like I, I like it for the size. Sometimes, sometimes I, I, I can make a meal for my wife and I because the kids won't like it. And this is a good, uh, instead of bringing out the bigger one, like the five quart, this is a good size to use. Or if you're single or for yourself, um, this is a great size to use as well. But the other thing that I wanted to show you guys is the uh, this um, eight number eight Finex. So the reason why we have these two here is that uh, Finex has this bundle where you can get the three quart um, Dutch oven and the eight inch skillet as a bundle. And as you can see here, the Eight inch lid works great for the skillet as well. So I think Finex, obviously Finex made it to the, to where these little lids were gonna, or the lids were gonna work with the Dutch oven and the skillet. So anyway, this is a bundle you can buy. I think it retails for $300, three or 350, something like that. I can't recall. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the description after the, uh, we're done with the live. But if you guys are interested, yes, you can do buy this bundle, which is actually pretty cool. As I said, you know, you can put the lid for the Dutch oven, you can use it for the skillet. And uh, overall, it's pretty cool. I like it a lot. But with that said, let me read some comments real quick. <clears throat> BMF says, so much better than some field or butter pad ripoff. Uh, let's see. Lodge is premium. Yeah, Lodge, as I mentioned earlier, Lodge is, it's hard to beat, guys. Lodge is so good. And I love it. I have, I have more Lodge than I do anything else. I, I've bought in a lot of, uh, their very unique skillets that have the, uh, you know, like the underside that have been, uh, that have the special, uh, designs on them. I have a lot of them with the sticker still and, my wife tells me, like, why do you want so many of these? And I told her, I said, it's honestly, these are part of a collection. I just have them as a collection. I'm not going to use them. They're just there as a collection. Uh, to her, it's kind of senseless, but I like it. Uh, Cynthia says, uh, honest, honestly, Rick, the perfect for a single person. Yes, it is, actually. Uh, Rick says, uh, it's such a little cutie. It is. This thing is, uh, when I saw it, I kind of chuckled because I thought it was just funny. But it does come in handy, guys. I actually used this and I made uh, I made my, my family dinner with this. Uh, I Obviously, if you guys know me, the first thing that I'm going to do is fry some chicken tenders in this. And that's exactly what I did. And I was actually able to fry all the chicken tenders. They came out beautiful. Um, so I was very happy with that. And that's pretty much where this seasoning came from is that is uh, frying, and that's the only thing, I think that's the only thing I've actually made. So just so you guys can see the difference, this is, you know, this is um, bare, hasn't been seasoned, hasn't been used, and uh, this is after one use. So as you can see, like, it already started to develop more seasoning, and that's the thing I like about these little Dutch ovens, um, and the fact that they don't mill them inside. Uh, they hold seasoning so well. So yeah, there's already a difference, which is funny, you can see the difference between the, uh, you know, the brand new one versus the one that I just used. Honey Badger says, looks good for making bread. Yeah, this, this I think this little Dutch oven is good for uh, like a little loaf, uh, whether it's a no need bread or a sourdough. The, I think this one is going to do great for that. And I'm, I, that's exactly what I plan to use this one for.
Debbie says, uh, it was really good. Nobody eats it here but me, so I don't get to make it hardly ever, but this time it's all mine, Cynthia. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm a little uh, off the uh, conversations here. Debbie says, good for a chili night potato soup. I made chicken and dumplings. I've uh, been craving it for a while. Uh, hello, Debbie. I don't think I've seen you around here, but uh, if you are new, thank you for, uh, sh you know, being here. Thank you for watching. Uh, as I said earlier, we are making some uh, potato soup. BMF, uh, thank you for the donation once again. He says, Butter Pat is an overpriced Wapak ripoff. Yeah, and uh, he did actually uh, get inspiration from the Wapak uh, skillets. <coughs> Let's see. Um, Honey Badger says he spatchcocked a turkey in his 17-inch lodge. I don't think I'll ever do it uh, another way. Oh, yeah, those 17-inch lodge. I did my turkey last year in that. Uh, and it was, I think we had like a 23 pound turkey and it, you know, it, it fit well. I tried using the Finex, uh, 14, but yeah, that was way too small. So I had to switch over to the 17. If the, if the field company number 16 would have came out, I probably would have used that one because that one's, I want to say a little bit bigger than the, the, uh, lodge. So that 17 inch lodge is a tiny bit smaller than the field one. The field one's bigger cooking. The cooking surface is bigger. Like the top hammer, I think is just exactly the same, but the uh, cooking surface is bigger on the field. <coughs> Let me grab some water, guys, real quick. I'm gonna check also on the um, soup in a minute. All right, guys, soup is looking good. Okay. So, yeah, um, what I wanted to do, guys, is I'm going to do another giveaway. I'm not sure exactly what what uh, I'm going to do a giveaway with, but uh, I want to do another one, and I will most likely announce it by tomorrow. So look forward to a community post uh, here on YouTube, guys, and uh, we'll do that giveaway um, and I do want to do a special giveaway, so possibly something of this, like this, whether it's the Finex, uh, Field, or Stargazer or something. I'm going to try and get you guys one of the Elite Pans. But uh, I guess you could say, for those of you that are here, what brand would you like me to do a giveaway of? Uh, whether it's uh, Lancaster, Lodge, Finex, Butterpat, Smithy, uh, Finex. I think I already said Finex, but anyway, let me know if you guys have any suggestions of what possibly you guys are more interested in. So leave that in the comments right now. Let me know what you guys want. Uh, I do want to do something fancy for for uh, Christmas. Not necessarily fancy, but you know something nice for for uh, for Christmas. And for those of you, you know, I, I've done a lot of lodge giveaways and um i appreciate you guys participating in those and being here in the uh in the lives along with watching the videos and giving me all that support and that's one of the reasons why i do that honey badger i did a lancaster giveaway before i don't remember if i did a lancaster oh there we go um Fredericksburg is another one that I forgot about. Borough Furnace was another one that I forgot about. Oh, Honey Badger says that uh, he got a Borough Furnace enamel Dutch oven. Let me know how that uh, Dutch oven is, Honey Badger. Um, I tried getting myself one, but 
uh, I, I think it was too late and they ended up selling out. But anyway, let's see. Um, so we got some Lancaster or Fredericksburg. Cynthia, <laughs> Cynthia Wesley says, it doesn't matter, it's all bougie. Just send it to the winner. John says, uh, Lodge is a larger outfit, larger scale, so they can offer stuff at a cheaper price than these smaller outfits. Yeah. And um, Lodge, obviously Lodge uses their, uh, their machines, their automated machines for pouring, for seasoning. So um, everything's a lot quicker with Lodge. They can crank out a lot of products a lot of variety of products versus the smaller ones that, you know, do hand poured um, skillets like butter pat, I know is one of them. Uh, Marquette, I think also does Marquette castings from Michigan. They do a hand poured um, casting as well. Uh, I don't know about field. I think they also might have a company that does their, their stuff, but it might be automated. Field, uh, Stargazer might be, I think Stargazer might be handmade. But I know for a fact that Field is outsourced on uh, to several uh, foundries. Finex, I think, uh, Finex I'm not even sure about. That's something that I would need to talk to the, uh, to the people at Finex. Matthew Williams says, what's your favorite pan if you could only pick one? Uh, I think I've said it before, but if I haven't, uh, Finex. Finex has become one of my favorite ones. Smithy, uh, Smithy was one of the initial ones that I bought, uh, but I was very harsh on. And, this, and the reason being is that um, when I started using cast iron, I kind of... Uh, was upset at the fact that my seasoning was just, you know, whenever I bought the Smithy uh, skillets, obviously the seasoning would, would just cook away. Like it, the seasoning was, and to this day, I'll be honest, Smithy doesn't have the best seasoning. Honestly, their seasoning is more of a uh, rust prevention because once you cook with it, that seasoning is going to go away. Um, it's not going to get better. And, and uh, it's honestly better if you just cook with it and then build your seasoning because it will eventually just uh, kind of erode the seasoning that they provide erodes away. So then when you start building up your own, they get so much better. Um, and to the point where my skillets have become almost, uh, almost jet black. They look great. My smithies are beautiful. I love them and they cook so well, but um, Finex and Smithy are one of my top favorites. Um, butter pat, I don't use it that much, but I love the way it cooks. Uh, Stargazer, also really great. The only thing about Stargazer is that um, the seasoning is also a little difficult to maintain. Lodge, Lodge is honestly really great. Even with the seasoning, I love Lodge and the seasoning. Um, there's been occasions where I use Lodge uh, skillets. So I just give them a wash and then I'll use them and then you know, I don't, I don't necessarily give them a coat of seasoning. I just let them build their own. Uh, and in my opinion, Lodge already has great seasoning. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I like it. BMF says, I love my Burrow Furnace 10 and a half inch skillet. I have the nine inch. I'll, I'll be honest with you, BMF. Uh, I don't really particularly like the design on Burrow Furnace. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute.
All right, guys, sorry about that. I was just checking up on the uh, potatoes. They're starting to get soft. I want to say about another five to uh, 10 minutes. But anyway, oh, uh, burrow furnace, the reason why I don't like it is uh, here, and, and I'll show you why in a minute. Let me just grab the one that I have. All right, guys, so um, this is the, the Burrow Furnace skillet. And one of the main reasons why I don't like Burrow Furnace, uh, I like it, but one of the things that I don't like about it and kind of uh, irritates me is that whenever I use this skillet, this this here, the helper handle, has a, a lower lip for some reason. And uh, so whenever you're cooking something here and you're using your spatula or whatever it is, you ha it has the tendency of falling off. Um, for some reason, I don't know exactly why they decided to go a little bit lower here. Um, and it is a lot easier to, you know, whenever you're moving things around, food will fall off. And that's one of the things that I don't like. The other thing that I don't like is the updated handle. So as you can see, I, I have the uh, updated handle it's a solid piece and this thing gets blazing hot. Um, especially after a certain amount of time that you're cooking with it, this thing is just hot as can be. But overall, like the, uh, just this, the finish on it is great. The seasoning on it is great. Um, it's a great overall like design with just some minor things that I think that if they could fix, you know, this skillet would be awesome. As I said here, if they could raise up the lip here uh, that would fix one of the issues and then go back to their the the original design where it was pretty much notched out don't know why exactly they made it to where it's a solid piece um, even when you stick this in the oven this thing just heats up like crazy and it retains the heat as well so um, not only that but it adds weight to the skillet so that's one of the things that I don't like about burrow furnace at the moment Anyway, guys, with that said, I'm going to continue with the food. So we're going to move over back to the kitchen. Got to adjust the height. All right. It is warm, so I don't want to burn myself. <clears throat> All right, guys, I think it's looking pretty good here. We're going to start to mash these potatoes. Debbie says, I like my old lodges too. I have several and uh, some BSR, Griswold, and lots of others. Can't remember the names right now. Uh, Wagner. Oh, yeah. yeah. You have a lot of the uh, vintage iron, which I do as well. I have, a, uh, have, I have several Griswold, BSR, Lodge, um, Wagner Ware, Favorite Pico Ware, Martin Stove and Range, um, I have a Victor, um, um, I, I think it's a number nine Victor. Uh, what else do I have? I have some other ones too, but yes, I actually have a lot of vintage stuff and it works great and I can see why people love it. I also have some mystery skillets, uh, some Southern mystery skillets that are unmarked, um, not necessarily, uh, you know, one thing or the other, it's just a, Southern skillets, I guess. All right. So I think they might need a little bit more. Yeah, 
Yeah, some of these potatoes are hard. Some are soft, some are hard. What are we at, guys? Are we almost, oh shoot, we're almost at two hours. I think what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'll upload a video showing you guys the finished product. We're gonna let this, I'm gonna let this, I don't wanna keep you guys here too long. And um, I pretty much talked about the Finex. I've showed you guys what I was making. And uh, I know it is getting late, especially in the East Coast. We're at what, 8, 9, 10, 11 in the East Coast. So it is late. It is a week day, so I don't want to keep you guys too long. So with that said, as I mentioned earlier, look out for giveaways. Look out for more uh, content. I'll post uh, the finished product of this potato soup. We're going to let this simmer a little bit longer. Yeah, this needs more time, definitely. But uh, once I get this going, guys, as I said earlier, I'll post uh, a... Uh, I'll make a post on uh, YouTube so you guys can see it and then uh, I will catch you guys on the next uh, live next week uh, as I said earlier too I'll be posting um, another video about the giveaways so look forward to that and uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the uh, this tonight sadly we're at two hours now six seven eight yep two hours and as I said, I don't want to keep you guys up too late. So I hope uh, everybody has a lovely night. Good evening to everybody. I will catch you guys next week uh, for the live. So with all that, guys, thank you for being here. Uh, BMF, thank you for the donations. And uh, everybody else that donated, I think it was Honey Badger. Thank you for that. I appreciate everybody, and I will see you guys on the uh, next episode or the next show. Good night, everybody.